yeah, we will conclude this week on an overview of uh, transducers used in condition-based uh, monitoring or CBM. So, what I am going to do is, you know, there are many transducers which are used in CBM. Okay, the mechanical parameters here are listed, followed within brackets the typical or uh, transducers, the name of the transducers which are used for uh, certain of these measurements and some more I will discuss while we go ahead on this class. So, as you know by now in CBM almost 70 percent of the monitoring is actually done by vibration and vibrations are actually measured by transducers which are known as accelerometers. There is a sensing element in this accelerometer which earlier used to be strain gauge, but today throughout the world usually piezoelectric accelerometers are used where the sensing element is the piezoelectric material. For radiated noise or the sound we use microphones. Microphones again they, there are different types of microphones, but for the industrial CBM microphones they could be piezoelectric microphones or the condenser type or the capacitive type microphones because of the fact they have wide frequency response unlike the carbon uh, granule microphones. Rotation speed is a very, very important mechanical parameter I would say uh, which is measured uh, other than uh, vibration monitoring, uh, vibration in rotating machines because you will realize that when I have a machine, just to recap, every machine actually may be having one or two rotating shafts supported on bearings which are rotating and this could be put in a casing. and they could be carrying some pulley gear etcetera. And then I could be having a casing here. So, this is the typical scenario of any machine. Now, I will put a transducer either here, use a different color pen here. I could use a transducer here, I could put a transducer here and so on. Okay. I could be measuring some x 1 t, some x 2 t, but I need to measure the rotational speed omega or n r p m, because as you realized the forcing frequency that is the frequency at which signals are being generated are usually related to the rotational speed n r p m or sometimes given in omega. So, I need to measure rotational speed and of course, we will talk about different speeds because suppose engine firing frequencies, engine firing frequency is nothing but n r p m. So, n by 60 into k is the number of cylinders into 1 by 2 if it is a 4 stroke engine. Where k is the number of firing cylinders. You see this engine firing frequency is related to the rotational speed. Okay. Another quantity is say the wind pass frequency.
when pass frequency f say 0 is nothing but n times 60 times number of number of veins or blades ok. Again n is the rpm here n also. So, to identify forcing frequency one has to always use what is known as the um, rotational speed of the machine and we will spend some time trying to see what the different methods to measure rotational speed. Current we can measure by Hall effect sensors, temperature by resistance temperature detector, thermocouple or even infrared cameras, flow rate by a turbine flow meter and thickness by an ultrasonic thickness gauge. So, what I am going to do is pictorially go you go to you and show you some of these transistors so that you get a feel of what is the, how they look like and what. So, this is a typical piezoelectric accelerometer if you will see this here and you will see uh, one of my technical staff is holding this in his hand just to get you a relative feel of the dimensions of this accelerometer and you see this this is a sealed unit the sensing element is actually inside it and uh, we will discuss more about the accelerometers in particular in the subsequent class, but you will see that there is a connector here wherein we put this cable. So, that whatever charge is being generated because of the motion of this base can be converted to a charge to voltage uh, voltage through a charge to voltage amplifier and once I have a voltage it is a dynamic electrical signal which could be conveyed over cables to a signal conditioner. So, as you know vibration is very directional. So, the sensing element the piezoelectric crystal which is put inside this different accelerometers are also have a direction to which they are most sensitive ok. And this is an uniaxial accelerometer and by the way this is this is about you know this diameter is about you know 15 mm in size ok about a 50 paisa coin size ok. So, there is a connector on the top ok. This is a little smaller accelerometer and then the connector is in the side where we put the cable and there is a, a mechanism uh, there is a tap in the bottom of the accelerometer by which it could be tapped onto a surface. Now, as you will see now all of you can say that this has a higher sensitivity, this has a lower sensitivity, this being of a smaller mass has a higher frequency response and this has a lower frequency response. But now if I put three piezoelectric crystal in one unit in three mutually perpendicular directions this is known as a triaxial accelerometer. So, the transducer this transducer is mounted on a surface any vibration which is measured along this direction and on the x direction will come out of this cable any vibration measured along this direction on the plane of this projection is in y direction and now z with a circle here means the direction is perpendicular to the plane of the projection. So, I am able to measure at any point this if where this transducer is mounted in three mutually perpendicular directions and these are certain studs which are used to um, uh, mount such three axis accelerometers are known as triaxial accelerometers or sometimes they are known as triax. So, triaxial accelerometers are known as tri ax ok. Now, once we have the signal out of this accelerometers we could put it in a vibration meter. So, that either I can see the vibration spectrum 
in a vibration meter. I could see the RMS value, I can see the mean value or even I can see the vibration spectra or spectrum. Okay. So, this is a vibration meter, digital vibration meter, where it once you mount the transducer and we can see the spectrum. Actually, this also has a built in charge to voltage pre amplifier. Okay. All these functionalities are available in the vibration meter. Of course, here you can change, select the frequency uh, frequency range also. And nowadays, in uh, digital uh, vibration meters, you will recall that when I measure the vibrations, some a meters per second square, I can get the velocity amplitude, nothing but a by omega on the displaced sorry uh, yeah. of course, I should have named it a. So, and yeah and then the displacement is nothing but ok. So, this is my acceleration, this is my velocity this is my displacement. So, you see in such vibration meter if I see the vibration spectrum in acceleration I can just at every frequency I can divide it by omega where omega is nothing but 2 pi f this is in radians per second and f is in hertz. I can get either the velocity spectrum or the displacement spectrum. Earlier, when digital vibration meters were not available, people were using analog vibration meter and we have couple of them in our uh, labs, you know, which are still working maybe 30, 40 years old. So, you will see the piezoelectric accelerometer connected with a very low triboelectric noise cable to a vibration meter, wherein you have the option of choosing either velocity, displacement or acceleration. You can measure the RMS value, mean value and then you have such a meter. You also have an option to take the analog output from this. This is a typical piezoelectric microphone. These microphones usually have a thin membrane. Okay. So, this this membrane would vibrate because of the sound pressure. So, the capacitance would change and then we will have a corresponding voltage okay. and then of course, in piezoelectric microphones we have a piezoelectric layer put here and such a microphone is put in a sound level meter wherein we can measure the there it can be a digital display or the sound level being measured. Similar to microphones which we have used in air, there are cases wherein we have to do in many cases underwater. noise and vibration monitoring. So, microphones which are used for underwater use to measure underwater. noise are known as hydrophones. Okay. 
So this hydrophone also has a piezoelectric sensing element here. Of course, there are a lot of things related to the coupling of the energy so that the all the energy which is coming in gets transmitted into the hydrophone and there is a sensitivity and these are long cables. Sometimes the cables are so long, you know, if you are going to measure in, a, in an ocean, you can, you can suspend from a boat, you can suspend a hydrophone down to the bed of the ocean. Okay. This cables could be, you know, maybe 50 meter or even 100 meter. So, you can see underwater noise, you know, to understand marine features, to understand propeller noise, to understand enemy ships, sonars are nothing but hydrophones mounted on the hull of a ship. Okay. So, you can measure such underwater vibrations or underwater noise by using hydrophones. The principle is the same, but then they also have a different frequency range etcetera. So, to measure the underwater vibrations, we also have underwater accelerometers. If you will see, this is the accelerometer here and again they have long cables integral with the accelerometer and uh, then you will have an output which are used. So, today CBM does not mean only measuring machines you know which you see uh, in, a, in a shop floor. Uh, underwater measurements uh, are being done to find out the impact of you know underwater piling noise, uh, movement of ships in a um, channel which could affect the marine life you know sometimes because of lot of underwater movement of ship, of vessels, of fishing vessels, of uh, trawler noise, the motor outboard motor noise of such boats, does it affect the life of uh, the marine animals? Do marine animals migrate away from ports or from areas where the noise has increased? So, this kind of monitoring are also being done many times when you know bridges or you know are being built over you know water bodies uh, large long flyovers so they need to do a lot of piling okay because you know cbm always does not mean health of machines you know environmental environmental health monitoring, be it ambient air, noise, underwater, even vibration, underwater noise and vibration. I, I will give some ideas for you know people who are uh, appearing in this uh, online course today in our country because infrastructure developments we are having metro constructions flyover over flyover or bridges over large water bodies. Okay. Construction of large skyscrapers. That means you can in, in, in imagine the foundation. We need to have a strong foundation of you know rock bed foundation. So if you soil conditions are very very important, you cannot have a large skyscraper built on a soft soil 
or we you know this so metro construction so they do what is known as concrete piling to have a solid anchorage point so that piles could be put whether it is in a, in water or whether it is in soil so all this will lead to a lot of underwater noise vibration and you know buildings could get damaged because of large piling and so on. so one has to monitor using such uh, equipment now we'll specifically focus on the speed measurements so if you see a shaft this is a cross sectional view of a shaft with a key which is rotating now suppose i put a simple electromagnet okay and every rotation what happens this gap is going to change now this is an electromagnet or a reluctance type probe so what happens in time every rotation once the key wave just comes below the reluctance type probe the gap is going to reduce so i will get a voltage okay so the time interval between two consecutive gap is the time period of rotation of the shaft so if i connect this signal to a frequency counter such frequency counters are available i will get the rpm or speed is nothing but 1 by t seconds okay or in uh, proper units either in rpm and so on so this is a very convenient type of pickup which is used for measuring rotational speed and you can very easily get this uh, it is very relatively very cheap so every in fact today in the industry every rotating machine be it a pump be it a um, fan be it a gearbox they have at one of its end such a key phaser mount okay such a reluctance type mount and which is connected to a frequency counter wherein you will get a digital display of the rpm but you know the accuracy of this depends because i cannot very you know this gives a mean value over a period of time but if i want to see the change in rotational speed over one rotational that calls for a higher accuracy and that we do what is known as in an optical encoder of course another method of measuring the rotational speed is just having a tacho generator you know you measure the frequency of the voltage which is being generated by the tacho generator which is meant uh, connected to the output shaft because a lot of optical tacho probes are also being used wherein we have a surface which is rotating so we will put a reflective tape tape so if there is a beam which is going on same instance i will get a beam back so again so the problem with uh, the advantage of optical probe is they can be from a large distance
So, it takes only a fraction of a second because you know speed of light is 3 into n to the power 8 meters per second. Okay. Because of such high speed light, we are able to use in a simple optical tacho probe. So, one is a transmitter and other is a receiver. So, again we will get a similar pulse and we can measure. So, optical only because of this reason the large and the advantage of our reluctance type um, probe is you know you can shoot a optical tacho probe from a large distance and then you can get the measure. For example, something is rotating high up and we are not able to access it. Only thing is that we need to have a reflective tape so that the light which is incident on the shaft gets reflected and such an optical tacho probe you see is being used in our lab. Okay. Of course, many of the electrical phenomena you will see relate to the voltage or the current. Okay. If the voltage is varying AC, I can have a transformer. Okay. Either by a step down or a step up. So, this is known as CT coil current transformer coils and then we can measure the voltage. But even if the signal is DC, we can have a sensor based on the Hall effect which can be used to measure either the current or the voltage sensor. We will discuss this when we talk about electrical machines such transducers are also available. Thermocouple because of two metals kept at a different junction because they are of different materials and uh, we, we can by knowing one end we can measure the other end. Such industrial thermocouples are there for different ranges and they can be used for different temperature ranges and so on and such thermocouple based devices are also used. We have also infrared temperature detectors when we talk about thermography we will see how the infrared energy emitted by a surface can be measured as a, a function of its absolute temperature to the power 4 and then we can measure the temperature of the surface which is radiating this infrared energy. Ultrasonic thickness gauge we will discuss this. Uh, is similar only thing is that similar to the optical case, but wherein we give a very high frequency signal from okay and because of the impedance variation between the surface there will be a reflection back. So, the time taken between the incident and reflected back this is the time. So, and this distance is L. So, I know L because it is going and coming twice L is equal to C by T. So, I can find out L is C T times 2 and C for ultrasonic for example, for steel it is 5000 meters per second. So, I can just find out the thickness of uh, this is the time of course. and this time is detected by a detector here, it will measure the time. So, we can measure such thicknesses of surfaces using such ultrasonic thickness gauge. Ultrasonic thickness gauges later on you will see are used to detect cracks in a surface because they should reflect back from some location. So, by a proper scanning through using ultrasonic gauges, we can find out the occurrence of the crack in a surface. So, more of these some of these uh, transducers you will find in my book. Thank you.